Hey there YouTube, it's Nick with Feeding Fitness. Um, today I'm going to answer a viewer question. Uh, I thought it was a decent question, so I'm going to go ahead and do a video on it. Um, question today comes from ncoreg1127, and uh, I'm just going to read his question here. I'll paraphrase a little bit. Okay, straight to the point. I'm new to if it fits your macros. I eat 80% bro and I like it, but I don't want to have cravings and develop an eating disorder. So I'm introducing other foods, but I'm kind of scared. Now the reason for that is carbs. I love carbs, and I eat these clean carbs daily, but it gets so boring. Um, so what I'm asking is if out of four or five of my meals, if one or two incorporate sugary carbs such as cereals, flavored yogurts, or rice pudding, is it okay? Will it give me an energy surge and then cause a crash and make me crave more sugary food within minutes of eating. Um, I hit all my micros and my fiber every day consistently. So, is a carb just a carb? Will eating foods with some added sugars that are not complex cause me to gain weight in a deficit? Because apparently sugar can turn calories into fat easily. Bottom line, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to be able to eat a variety of foods without experiencing crashes. I know 80 grams of oats will keep me full for a good two to three hours, but will that change if I have cereal? Okay, loaded question, a lot of things in there. Um, I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay, you mentioned that 80% of your diet is bro. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know what that means, that means 80% of his diet is the typical minimally processed whole foods that the bodybuilder community eats where you're having, you know, your chicken breast, your broccoli, your whole grain rice, your whole grain carbs, your only simple carb sources are fruits. So right there, 80% of your diet is coming from whole nutritious foods. And I'm a fan of that. Probably 75 to 80% of my diet comes from whole nutritious foods. Now, what he's asking is can he incorporate other things um, for that last 20%? And that really is the heart of if it fits your macros. Of course you can. You can eat whatever you want for that last 20%. I wouldn't worry about it in the least bit. If you're hitting your macros and 80% of your food is whole, minimally unprocessed food, you're going to end up hitting your micros and your fiber. So go ahead, eat whatever you want for that last 20%. It's not going to make a lick of difference in your body composition. And in all honesty, it's going to help you stick to your diet because you're going to be able to eat those, you know, foods you crave. Um, and you're not going to get caught up, you know, thinking about those foods and then blowing your diet because you go and binge on them. Some of the other things he brought up though. Um, he's talking about clean carbs. I don't like the term clean carbs. It's stupid. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. There are no clean carbs. What does clean mean? You know, I, if I wash a sweet potato, is it now a clean carb? Doesn't forget that. Forget that carbs one are better than the other, so on and so forth. Um, yes, whole food carbs have a different glycemic index than. Um, sugary processed carbs, but for all intents and purposes, the glycemic index is almost irrelevant. Um, the glycemic index is basically how fast your body deals with the carbohydrates. And it takes much longer for the body to process um, whole food, uh, you know, whole grain sources of carbohydrates, the complex carbs, than it does for the sugary carbs. But the glycemic index is based on if you eat that food alone, by itself, in absence of any other food. Most of us eat mixed meals, i.e., I'm going to have chicken, broccoli, and white rice. So if I have those three things versus chicken, broccoli, and whole grain brown rice, um, my absorption rates aren't going to be much different. If all I did was have a bowl of white rice versus a bowl of brown rice, sure, that white rice is going to get absorbed quicker, the body's going to make use of it faster than the brown rice, but in the context of a mixed meal, it really is irrelevant. Furthermore, um, when you're in a deficit and you're uh, um, eating less than you're uh, putting out per day, it doesn't matter how quickly you absorb it because you're not going to store anything. This is an important point to make. He asked if he starts eating a few of these sugary or you know processed sources of carbs, is he going to gain weight on a deficit? It is impossible 
to put fat on in a deficit. Your body will not do it. I don't care what, I don't care if all of your carbohydrates were sugary processed carbs. If you're in a deficit, you cannot, by definition, gain fat. It's not going to happen. Um, your body needs a surplus of energy to create fat stores no matter what you're eating. So no, if you're in a deficit, it, you will not gain fat. Now, can you gain weight in a deficit? Plenty of things will cause you to gain weight. It's typically water weight, glycogen, it's just the scale playing tricks on you. Are you gaining fat in a caloric deficit? No. If you're 100% convinced that you are putting on fat, you can visibly see fat gains, or you, you just for some reason know you're putting on fat in a deficit, then you're not actually in a deficit and you need to eat less because it just isn't possible. All right, now you ask a couple other good questions. Are you gonna have like uh, energy boost followed by a crash? That has never happened to me. In my entire life, I have never experienced what people refer to as a sugar rush. Never in my entire life. I felt a caffeine rush um, and things like that, but a sugar rush, never felt it. A sugar crash, I've never experienced it. That's more a personal thing. If eating processed sugar all of a sudden causes you to have a rush followed by a crash, then yeah, that maybe can happen to you. I would think if you ate your sugar in the context of a full meal, if you had it with some protein and um, some fats, I'm going to think it's much less likely to happen. And I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But again, in my entire life, I could probably eat an entire you know, giant chocolate cake and I don't think I'd feel a sugar rush followed by a crash. It's never happened to me. So now will eating some of these minimally or eating some of these highly processed, you know, junk foods cause cravings. This is another personal thing. This is um, going to affect everybody differently. For me personally, if I cut out all of my favorite junk foods, that's going to make me crave them like nobody's business and almost to the point where I'm going to break diet just to have that junk food. If I incorporate small amounts of it into my everyday diet, it's just enough for me to keep those cravings at bay. Now, some of you are different. I know plenty of people that when they cut, they completely eliminate all junk food only because they can't eat it in moderation. If you physically can't eat it in moderation, if you're the type of person that once you have a cookie, you're going to have 10, don't have a cookie. Um, I think that's slightly unhealthy relationship with food going on if you really are, you know, I either binge on cookies or I don't eat any cookies. That's not exactly balanced in my opinion and I think you should work on being able to eat things in moderation. But um, will eating a little bit of junk food cause you to crave, crave more and more junk food? That again is personal. Experiment, see how things work for you. But honestly it shouldn't. Really eating you know, just a little bit of junk food every day should be just enough to take the edge off um, and then you won't have intense cravings for it. And then later on when you've finished your cutting goals and you've got to a body fat that you're okay with and you start building muscle and you have tons of calories to play with, that's something you can really start having fun with if it fits your macros. But again, if it fits your macros, it's never an excuse to just eat like an idiot. Um, yeah, you can lose weight eating nothing but McDonald's. Should you? Probably not. <laughs> um, there are plenty of reasons why not. But could you have good body composition, six-pack abs, and exist on only things they sell at McDonald's? Yeah, it's theoretically possible. So um, I think that addressed all your questions. Um, but yeah, just uh, wanted to put that out there because I know people get nervous um, when they start if it fits your macros. Believe me, I was terrified. I had been eating a typical bro diet for months, and just when I started looking at the science and it all made sense, it was still terrifying to put it into practice. It was like I've worked this hard to lose all this weight and now I'm going to start eating ice cream and cookies and they're telling me I'm still going to lose weight but everything I've ever read in a magazine or heard on TV says that's crazy but you know what? Forget everything you've read in a magazine and seen on TV. It's mostly bullshit. Um, the science is sound. If you are in a caloric deficit, you are going to continue losing weight and fat um, whether or not you're eating some sugary processed foods. It's just science. You can't argue with it. 
Um, again, don't fill your entire diet with highly processed sugary foods just because you can. That's not exactly healthy. Good luck hitting your micronutrients and your fiber if you're eating nothing but junk food. But guys, don't be afraid to have a little bit of junk food. Um, it's fine, and I think it's going to help you stick to your diet. So I uh, hope you found this informative. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, questions in the comment section below or over at the Facebook page. Um, again, I love getting good questions like this. Uh, if you send them to me, there's a good chance they'll be in a video. So I'll see you guys next time.